fish change color? Well, yes, they can do a very good job. They have cells that look like this. This is highly magnified cells in their skin. And this pigment, <coughs> colored pigment in the cells, and the cells you see are highly branched. The pigment can be spread out through the whole cell or condensed in a tiny spot. So if you've got dark pigment and you've got a whole network of these cells in the fish's skin and all the pigment is spread out, the fish is going to be dark. But if all the pigment here were to all condense into a tiny spot and all of this area here were pale, the fish would look pale. So that's how the fish change the color using these cells in the skin. And they generally do it to blend in with the background. And the flounders can do a pretty good job of it. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it? It's kind of matching the checkerboard. Yeah. Flounder. What about? Flounder. Yeah, this is a flounder. Um, a fluke. A fluke, a flounder, a flatfish. And they're not the only fish that can, can do this. Uh, but they're particularly good at it. And they blend in with their background. The chromatophores come in different colors. So you see there are some that are dark, some can be reddish, some can be yellowish. So they can um, change their colors in a variety of ways. And fish produce electricity. A few. Most don't, but a few can. There are electric eels and electric rays that can produce a high amount of voltage and would actually shock you if you were in the water when one set off a shock. And this is a picture of an electric eel and an electric ray. And what do they do it for? They stun small fish that they want to eat. So as fish is going by, they zap them with the electricity, and the fish is, you know, stunned, shocked, faints, and the ray or eel eats them. There are other fishes that produce much lower levels of electricity. Uh, these are fishes called mormyrids, and they look like this. It's a common name for these fish. They're called elephant fish. You can see why. Mm -hmm. And uh, they produce very low levels. The, the amount of electricity they produce is nowhere near enough to kill possible prey for them. What they use it for is sending signals to each other, for navigating, kind of like um, finding out about their environment and kind of talking to each other with these electric signals. Can fish produce life? Yes. Some do in the deep sea and they have light organs. And here's just a few pictures of some deep sea fish that are glowing in the dark with their light organs. That they produce the light by combining two different chemicals together, one called luciferin and luciferase, in the presence. It's the same way as fireflies make light. It's not identical chemicals, but uh, the same general idea. And what would they use light for? What do you think fish might want to use light? Yeah. To what? To attract smaller to fish. To attract smaller fish to eat them. And a particular fish that does that is the ones with these little things on their head. These are called angler fish. And they wiggle the, this thing on, and it glows in the dark and it's attracting smaller fish. It's a lure. And an ang the word angler refers to a fisherman. You know, and, and so these are fish that are fishermen. They're anglers. And the actual light itself can be produced by the fish itself or sometimes the lights produced by bacteria that live in their light. Here's another angler fish with this little glowing lure. Can fish make sounds? Some of them do. Um, and the way they do it is that swim bladder, that balloon-like thing in flooded plates, they hit it. And it's kind of like a drum. You've got something filled up with air and, and covered, and you hit it. It resonates, it's like a drum, and there's actually a fish called a drum. There's also a fish called a grunt. There's a fish called a, um, there's another one, grunt, drum, 
and Croker. Those are all named after the sounds they make. This is a drum, and that's a grunt. Um, and what can they use the sound for? They can, they're can. they really communicating with each other. Certain kinds of sounds are mating signals, courtship, and others are fear. If there's a predator around and they're scared, they make a certain noise that uh, tells the others of their species, you better get out of here, it's dangerous. So, how do fish catch their food? We have many different ways, many, many ways. One is filter feeding. That's like the whale shark that's eating, you have little things and you filter the water and catch little plankton out of it. And this is a menhaden um, that swims through the water and has structures in the gills. It brings in the water and attracts little plankton out of the water. Then we have other fish that are very fast and they catch their food very fast. And that's a barracuda there as an example of that. And then we have predation by ambush. This is a kind of fish, scorpion <laughs> that sits on the bottom, so it looks like a lump, like a rock. It's not clearly recognizable as a fish. It sits very still. Something comes by and zap. And that's an ambush. And then there's ambush with a lure. This is the angler fish we mentioned before. They wiggle the thing around and the prey comes by. And they eat. You see how big their mouth is. Oh, that's teeth. Those are teeth, yeah. A lot of deep sea fish, they're not really big, but they have huge mouths and sharp teeth. Can they but they're, person? No, because they're really only like this big. <laughs> <laughs> so they're tiny. But they're, if they were big, they would be really scary. Why do some fish swim in schools? First, we should say, what is a school? It's not just a group of fish. It's fish of the same species and the same size, swimming in the same direction at the same speed. Uh, and here's a school of, of grunts there. Uh, a fish school is no set leader. Uh, and the being in a school protects them against predators, especially if you're in the middle. If you're on the edge, not so much, but if you're in the middle, you're pretty safe against predators. Another advantage of schooling is that the water that's, the fish swimming in front are moving the water in such a way that it makes it easier for the fish behind to sort of go along with the current that's made by the moving tail of the fish in front. So they actually spend less energy swimming in a school. And so everybody gets this boost except for the ones in the very front. But the, is there any system to exchange positions? Yes, there's no set no. groups in the front, so it changes. And, and certainly if the school changes directions, the one that was on the the ones on the side now become the front. So um, sooner or later, everybody gets that energy advantage. 